And joining me right now is House Majority Whip Congressman Steve Scalise of Louisiana. Good to see you, sir. Thanks so much for joining us, Congressman. Morning. Great to be back with you, Maria. So in the House, you're set to move forward with votes on two immigration bills today. There's signs of some disarray. You heard our conversation a moment ago. House Freedom Caucus Chairman Mark Meadows says the compromise bill, quote, is not ready for prime time. What do you say to that, Congressman? Well, Maria, if you've been following immigration for the last few years, it's been probably one of the thorniest issues within Republican ranks. We've got a lot of different groups within our conference that have different approaches of how to fix it. The good news is we actually have been taking steps to solve this problem. And as you can see, Democrats don't want to solve the problem. They want a political issue. And so they've been opposing every effort to reform our broken immigration laws. I'm glad that the president really has leaned in and said, I want to solve this problem. He supports both of the bills that we're bringing forward today. But again, clearly, you've seen Democrats united to block any attempt to fix all of these problems, including we want to reunify families, and we do in our bill. Yeah, I totally understand that. And you write about Democrats. We all agree about that. But the Republicans seem to be really not unified either. I mean, count the votes. Can, can this compromise bill pass today? Look, when you count the votes in terms of talking to different groups within our conference, you clearly see the divisions. And, you know, how do you address DACA kids? We all want to solve that problem. But within our conference, there are a few very different ways to solve it. We all want to fund the wall, by the way. And in both bills, we fund the wall. And the second bill, we actually are more aggressive at front loading and making sure that the money gets spent uh, before uh, there's any kind of changes on the other side. And we do get rid of things like this broken visa lottery. I think we need to put more attention on the fact that every year, year, 55,000 people are given visas to come into this country legally uh, who are plucked, literally names plucked out of a hat, and in some cases from countries that don't like us. We need to get rid of that. In our bill, we do get rid of those kind of broken things. And again, unify families. Why don't we see Democrats wanting to support any of these ideas? Just keep in mind, when they had super majorities in the House, unlike us, where we're bringing bills to the floor, they never had any serious attempt to fix this problem when they had the House and a 60-vote majority in the Senate. So what are you going to do about it? I mean, going into the midterm elections, we know that they want to play politics with this. And, and you know, it's going to be a, a, a stop for you and your colleagues. So what do you do going into the midterm elections where you're trying to prove a point where you're getting things done, but you really don't have any help on the other side? Well, I do think having votes on the House floor important to show the American people where everybody is. And if you're uh, somebody that's in the DACA program right now, or if you're somebody that wants stronger borders and wants to see the president's wall get built, if you're somebody that wants to see families get reunified and you want Congress to take action on all of those issues, you're going to see at least two different votes today. And if you, you're following a Democrat who voted no on both, uh, then you know that they're not serious about solving this problem. Uh, no matter which side you're on, there's going to be some bill that you can rally behind that's on yeah. the floor today. Are there Republicans that are united uh, uh, about the border wall, the $25 billion that the president is asking for? Yeah, we've got clearly a large, large block of our uh, members that have been voting with President Trump to build the wall. There are some that aren't on board with that. But at the end of the day, uh, we've tried on a number of different fronts to get the wall funded. Today, both bills that are going to be on the floor fully fund the president's border wall. And, and more importantly, there are a lot of interior security problems that Secretary Nielsen has pointed out. Uh, there are loopholes in law that prevent her, in some cases, from deporting somebody who came here illegally and then committed a felony. When they get out of jail, we want to send them back to their country of origin. And in many cases, the law blocks are from even doing that. We close those loopholes, too, in these bills. All right, let me switch gears and ask you about this new proposal. The administration is, is weighing to merge the education and labor departments. The change would require an approval from Congress. With all that's going on, are you ready to add this to your legislative to-do list? I think reforming government is always something we should have time to do. And frankly, I've been a longtime advocate for completely eliminating the Department of Education. So I think what the president is proposing is a really good first step to get towards some of these problems uh, within the structure of government. I mean, look, we need to get back to a balanced federal budget. Maria, we've laid out a number of things. We've got to save Medicare from bankruptcy if we're going to do that. We've got to fix Social Security's uh, in inherent uh, insolvency problems. And we've laid out plans of how to do that. But at the end of the day, uh, you look at the size and structure of government, and it's just too big. Here's a real important first step.
Yeah, let me let me switch to the tax plan, Congressman. This week marks the sixth month anniversary uh, since President Trump signed the tax bill into law. You've got to be feeling good about this, you and your colleagues. Earlier this week, the Dow was pushed into negative territory for the year on the trade tensions. Are you concerned that the that all that you've done behind the tax reform actually could get derailed because of worries over the trade policy? Well, you know, we, we don't want a trade war. And we've talked to President Trump about this. And look, he's been very strong in insisting that he is negotiating better deals for America. We're not going to get into a trade war. But uh, ultimately, at least he didn't pull out of NAFTA. He said, let's go renegotiate with Mexico. Let's renegotiate with Canada. By the way, Canada got a really good deal in the last negotiation. And, and they have a lot of barriers to entry. Uh, Canada's a great friend, but there are a lot of American products that can't get into Canada. They don't have those same barriers coming here. Let's get a fair two-way agreement, and I'm glad that President Trump at least is pushing towards getting fair trade. But if you look at the successes we've had with this tax cut bill, it's been phenomenal. I mean, Maria, you've reported uh, for months now, I think all of us are marveled at how quickly the economy took off, uh, lowest unemployment we've seen in 20 years. Uh, just two weeks ago, it was reported there are more job openings than are people looking for jobs. Uh, Chairman Kevin Brady and his committee have done an incredible job of working now towards uh, tax cuts 2.0, the next round, and we're working with President Trump on that, too. We've seen great success. Let's build on the success. Every Democrat voted no. I hope they finally realize they made a really bad vote when they voted against giving people their money back. It's actually getting the economy moving. When we come back for more tax cuts and making those individual tax cuts permanent, I hope they finally join in and recognize the American people deserve their money back, and it's helping grow the economy. Well, it's growing the economy. Now we're talking about 4 percent expectations at some point in the next year or two, but there's there's also a narrative out there that things slow down going into 2020, that perhaps we see a recession in 2020, given the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates and now the worry over trade. So again, in terms of the trade policy, I recognize you want to see fair trade, but are we actually looking at this fight taking away the gains that you put in place because of the tax reform? Well, obviously, we're going to be watching it very closely, and July 1st is going to be an important date because that's when a lot of countries that we're having these negotiations with say they might start taking retaliatory action. We haven't gotten to July 1st, so let's keep the negotiations going. At least uh, there are active talks. And, and I hope they get resolved because I think it's good that we get better deals. And then let's go get deals for some of our European allies and Asian allies that we don't have today and start negotiating some of those agreements, too. But, uh, look, we've seen that China's been dumping and violating trade rules for decades. Uh, at least we're finally doing something about it there. But at the end of the day, let's keep the success going from our tax cuts and then get good, fair trade policy that works for America and our friends around the world. How are you feeling about the midterms at this point? I know it's only June, but... Uh... Uh, we're going to get to the midterm November elections fairly quickly. And for a, while, a little while, people were talking about a blue wave and then a red wave. Where are we today? Uh, look, it's going to be a battle. I mean, we've been preparing for battle for months, uh, and it's district by district. You know, you can look at all these generic ballot numbers, and it's nice yeah. to see that it's looking better for Republicans, and the economy definitely plays into that in a big way. But at the end of the day, it's going to be district by district races, and there's 30 to 40 races that will decide the majority. Pelosi wants to be Speaker again. She wants to raise taxes. We're going to continue to let people know what the difference is, and we're going to be yeah. fighting in every district to make sure we hold this majority. Congressman, good to see you this morning. Thanks so much. Great being back with you, Maria. Majority Whip Steve Scalia.